through the process of getting the documents and then what I do is I assist them all through the process from opening conversation to actually getting the deposit into their bank account to make sure that the process goes as smoothly as possible. From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. Today we're continuing our Cannabis Investor Spotlight Series with Managing Director Scott Jordan from Vertical Company Financial Services Group. Hi, Scott. Hi, Dan. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Scott fills a void in this industry that, you know, just seems like it shouldn't be there, but it is. And that is financing companies using debt in, instead of equity. Uh, I'm going to let Scott tell you more about this because, but it, because it's, although it seems like it should be pretty, pretty standard, it's not in this industry, is it, Scott? It is not. It's a young industry and it's high risk. Because it's high risk and because it's still federally illegal at this point in time, although I'm glad to see the farm bill looks like it should get signed any day now, uh, at least uh, legalizing uh, hemp and uh, CBD production, you know, THC products are still federally illegal. And so the banks are not going to participate in loans. And most companies that are concerned about risk of loss also do not want to participate in this. It's really the younger, more aggressive companies and some family offices and also some high net worth individuals that are willing to take the chance on cannabis. And also because the longest company or oldest company that's out there is probably five years old you know, with financial result from 2013, let's say, and it's very difficult for institutional investors to get comfortable with companies that A, don't have many banking options or permanent banking options be usually unaudited and see it's it's a difficult working with businesses that are subject to being shut down by a regulator because they haven't followed all the rules. Sure. I know back most industries, you start off with some money from your friends or your family, and then you roll right into a loan. And usually it's an S- SBA loan from the government and that gets you off the ground before you start before you start going into your series A's and series B rounds you always have some sort of debt with on your balance sheet and that's not common in this industry at all. You're right. You're right. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited to talk with you today and let your audience know there is debt uh, meaning loans for equipment, real estate, working capital, purchase order financing for marijuana and CBD business owners. Yeah, that's it's so nice because especially in early stage, you have to give up so much equity to get funding. And if you could just get a loan to get you through some of the startup, some of the well, not startup, but some of the growth stage, I should call it, some of the growth stage issues. If you could just get a loan by the time you reach out for venture capital, you have a solid enough financials that you don't have to give up so much equity and so much ownership. You're preaching to the choir. That's what I tell people every day. When I sit down, I take a look at their financials. I uh, come back and I say, okay, you know, based on what I see, I think you're, you're going to be looking at a interest rate of about X and a term of about Y. So in other words, the interest that, that you would charge the company has built into it all the risk that you guys are taking by making the loan. So I think people will appreciate that their interest rates are going to be a little bit higher than they would be if, if it were a more of a traditional loan, like for I'm getting a car loan or I'm getting a home mortgage, uh, mortgage, mortgage for my home. This is a little bit riskier. <laughs> this is a lot riskier. So you have to build that into your the interest rate that you're charging them. I don't think people would disagree with that. The money that you use to fund these loans where do you get that money from? I have developed a network starting out in 2014 when I did my very first loan. I've developed a network of lenders, both uh, small companies, family offices, high net worth individuals that tell me what their appetite is for uh, lending and 
what areas they want to lend in. And then I take that list. And when someone comes to me, I take a look and, and look through that list and see based on their needs, what funding source would be best for them. And then what I do is I act as a matchmaker. I kind of translate and help a borrower who's maybe not financially savvy deal with a financing source that is financially savvy. And I gather the documents and the information they need. I hold their hand through the process of getting the documents. And then what I do is I assist them all through the process from opening conversation to actually getting the deposit into their bank account to make sure that the process goes as smoothly as possible. Now, what kind of collateral will you require in, in, an, in a deal like this? Since there's four different food groups that we lend in, let, let me explain kind of each one. So on equipment, we take a UCC filing against the equipment. We also get a personal guarantee from the borrowers. For working capital, we sometimes on smaller loans can do that unsecured. For real estate, we obviously get a uh, lien on the real estate, and it's generally first lien. And for purchase order financing, we ask for a personal guarantee, and then the product or the inventory that we're financing acts as the collateral for that. I see. I see. Well, we've been speaking with Scott Jordan who's the Managing Director of Vertical Companies Financial Service Group. So if anyone right now is in the process of growing their business and they're uncomfortable giving up equity, Scott Jordan provides an alternative to that, and that's you know basically the old-fashioned way you borrow money as a loan. Scott, thanks for being on the MJ Bulls podcast. This is I know a lot of people need this, and I just think more people need to know about it. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for having me. And I look forward to speaking with people that want to grow their business without diluting the existing equity that they have and would rather make a payment than be obligated to someone for many years and then have to sacrifice uh, some of their equity, particularly at this time when cannabis companies are getting just these sky high valuations. You know, why give up equity if you can finance your growth with debt? Couldn't have said it better. Couldn't have said it better myself, Scott. Thanks again. Thanks.